All right, let's look at these last six questions from our benchmark, starting with number 25. The table shows the details of four types of fish found in a lake. Fish A is at the bottom of the lake and eats, it eats small fish. Fish B lives at the surface of the lake and eats small fish. Fish C lives at the bottom of the lake and eats insects. Fish D lives at the surface of the lake and eats insects. An additional type of fish is introduced in the lake that lives at the bottom of the lake and eats small fish and insects. How will this impact the fish population? So we're putting it at the bottom of the lake and it eats small fish and insects. So A and C is who it's going to be competing with, right? Because they also live at the bottom of the lake. A eats small fish and C eats insects. So we're looking for something that includes both A and C. That's question D, let answer D. The populations of fish A and C will decrease. That's the correct answer because we're putting another fish that lives at the bottom of the lake and it's going to be eating their food because it eats small fish and insects. So they're going to have less food because this other fish is eating their food too. So they're going to have less food to eat. So there'll be less of them. So that answer is D. Number 26, two of the same toy cars roll along a smooth table. Car A rolls faster and farther than car B. What causes car A to roll farther than car B? Okay, so what causes it to roll farther? Well, it goes farther because it has more energy, right? Car A rolls faster and farther because it has more energy. So that's A. B has more energy? No, or it would go farther. A makes more heat? That doesn't even make sense. 26 is A. 27. Examine the food web. Starts with the producer here, the grass and the flower. A beetle is eating both of them. The lizard is also eating the grass. The lizard is also eating the beetle, and the bird is eating the beetle. Poor beetle, he's eaten by everybody, isn't he? Which three organisms are consumers? That means they eat something else. So we can only choose the animals that are eating something. Well, plants don't eat something unless they're a Venus flytrap, right? We don't have one of those. So we've got the lizard is eating the beetle. The beetle is eating the grass. The bird is eating the beetle. So this would be the beetle, the bird, and the lizard, A, B, and E. Consumers mean they eat something. The only thing that's not eating something in this food web is the plants. All right, moving on down, question 28. A researcher records the time trash takes to decompose in landfills. Hey, we had something like this in a science lesson, kind of the same question. So it takes how many, this is how many years? The diaper, phew, 450 years. Fishing line, 600 years. Styrofoam cup is 50 years. Plastic bottle is 450 years. And a metal can is 300 years. I'm just looking across and seeing the line. So between 100 and 200 be 150, obviously. The researcher claims that diaper, plastic bottle, and fishing line use should be reduced. Which evidence supports the claim? So diaper, fishing line, and plastic bottle, those are the three that take the longest to decompose, right? So these three materials take more time to decompose. Seems like it's always A. A is the correct answer again. They make up most of the landfills. It doesn't say that in the chart. These materials generate more waste. It doesn't, that, we don't know that. These materials are manufactured more for human use. Oh, the evidence in the chart supports the claim that it takes them a long time to decompose, so we should use less of them. So that's A. Two more, and we're done with the whole benchmark. 29, a student claims that the environment has changed over time. Which fossil provides the best evidence to support that claim that the environment's changed? A fossil of shark teeth found in a desert. Well, that would be unusual. That would show that maybe used to be water in the desert. A fossil of a shark teeth in the ocean. Well, that's nothing. You can find shark teeth in the ocean anytime. A fossil of an organism that's still alive. And that doesn't show anything's changed. A f How can you have a fossil if it's alive? Anyway, I'm just kidding. It's a fossil of the same type of organism that's alive. A fossil of an organism that's now extinct. The best choice is a because environments changed over time. At one point, if you find a shark tooth in the desert, at one time that desert was covered with water and the sharks were swimming around and he lost his tooth. <laughs> and now there's a desert, so the environment changed. 30, this image shows four waves, P through S. 
All right, so look at PQRS. They have different qualities, don't they? Which wave has the greatest wavelengths? I think they're all pretty great. That's a weird way to ask this. So greatest means biggest in this question. Biggest wavelengths. And a wavelength is from crest to crest. So that would be that big. And that would be that big. This crest to this crest would go all the way across. These are little tiny wavelengths. Okay. So which one has the biggest wavelength? Well, it takes all the way from one line to the other to go from crest to crest on wave R. Don't like that question. I don't like how it's asked. Which has the greatest, I should say, the longest wavelength in my opinion. But either way, it's wave R. All right. Well, I hope this has helped you if you had some questions on these when you took the science benchmark. And hope you figure out why you missed it. And I hope if you have questions like these on the TCAP next week, you'll know them just like that. All right. Answer today's questions. See you later.